Hello and welcome to this webinar specifically um, developed for you, the City of employee, uh, city of Fort Collins employees. I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity to share this message with you about how to thrive during the many changes that we are facing um, throughout this COVID-19 pandemic and, um, and throughout the other changes that we're um, faced with day to day. And so I am so grateful to have this opportunity to share with you. Um, if you have specific questions, I know you are watching the recording right now, but if you do have specific questions, please contact me. I will share my contact information. Um, feel free to reach out and, and ask those co uh, confidential questions, okay? I would be happy to answer those. So the question is not how to merely survive, but instead how to survive. And I think that's exactly what I am so excited about with this specific um, presentation we're doing today. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself because I think knowing who you are hearing from is such an important piece of how you receive the information. So my name is Becky Lauritsen. I'm a licensed professional counselor and I'm also trained in EMDR. I'm the founder of IOMI. I am a wife to a handsome cowboy. I'm a mama of two little girls, Briar, who is five, and Bristol, who is a year and a half old. And I am crazy passionate about creating and overcoming, I should say, overcoming the mental health stigma and creating more awareness around mental health and self-care as a whole. Um, so this is just a part of that mission is to be able to have opportunities like this to be able to speak to employees such as yourselves about how you can really be preventative and proactive in your own mental health journey and also self-care. So that's a little bit about me, a little fun fact as well. Um, I am a country girl also, so just know that I am going to come at you real and authentic and maybe a little bit country, so I hope you are okay with that and can forgive, <laughs> forgive that as well. So just moving on, I always want to share a little bit about my business because I want you to know the heart behind what it is that I do. Because of the heart that I have and, and the work that we do, I created an incredible business to be able to support specifically that. And so it's an IO me instead of an IOU. And our purpose is to create guilt-free self-care because I believe with my whole heart and it's there's proof to show that self-care is indeed preventative care, that we can take a preventative approach to our mental health and our overall wellness, just like we talk about preventing physical health concerns, right? That eating right and exercising can help prevent those physical ailments. Same thing with mental health. Self-care, self-awareness, being intentional can help prevent mental health concerns also. So that's why I created IOMI in the way that I did is I want to create a simple and effective way for each of us to be able to experience guilt-free self-care. And we do that by partnering with over, I think we're at over 45 business partners, um, everything from mental health counseling, which we provide, to um, nutritional support, gym memberships, hair salons, um, massages, financial support. I mean, really, there's just the, the options are never ending, which is really great because it is a holistic, comprehensive approach to wellness, right? We have to be um, in our best mental health in order to be in our best physical health, vice versa, and so forth. So that's a little bit about the heart and the mission and the passion behind IOMI. And so now you know kind of where I'm coming at with these conversations that we're going to talk about it in a preventative way. Okay, so super fun. Okay, so today, specifically, we're talking about how to thrive during this challenging time to say the least. Okay. Um, so we're going to take, going to use this time to dive deep into your mental health and um, to support basically the success as you return to work, as you make these, face these changes that you are um, thrown <laughs> right, left and right with all the different changes, not only in your work life, but your personal life, your um, fun life, right? <laughs> Depending on the different activities you like to do and whatnot. So we're going to create a plan, okay? So first of all, we're going to dive deep into self-awareness. Through this, if you want to, I would 
wildly recommend and challenge you to have a notebook, write down some thoughts, write down some questions some reflections in on that notebook and take some time after this recording to, to reflect and be intentional about some of these questions I'm going to be asking because this is now is the time to really um, grasp a hold and, and become very aware of how you deal with things. So we're going to talk about the symptoms, of course. We're going to uh, talk about self-care. That's my soapbox. Of course, we're talking about it. Uh, we're going to identify tangible tools for you to be able to utilize and implement in order to thrive. So first things first, self-awareness. By definition, it's the conscious knowledge of one's own character, feelings, motives, and desires. So let's just take a deep breath, <laughs> deep cleansing breath in through our nose and out through our mouth. And I want you to focus on and ask yourself the question of how are you doing? Okay. How is this pandemic? How are the many changes? How are world events affecting you and your loved ones, your work, your health, your mental health? Okay, just take some time and ask yourself, how are you doing? Answer that question. And we're going to break it down. So character, right? It's time to get to know you and your character. So what would you say? So this is a, a fill in the blank. What would you say if somebody asked you to describe your character? What comes to mind? Jot some of those down. What would the feelings, right? What feelings do you have? What come up for you? The good, the bad, the ugly, it's okay. Because it's a roller coaster. I think if you can um, relate, <laughs> mine has been a roller coaster. And so it's okay to recognize the good and the bad and the ugly. What motives do you have? What motives do you have to keep you going to work, to keep you pushing through these challenges? Why is it important that you continue to work and work effectively? Why is it important for you to thrive instead of just surviving? And then it's kind of the same along the same lines as the desire. What is what would thriving look like for you? What would that look like instead of surviving? What would surviving look like for you, those that you love, for those that you work for? What difference would they see in you if you were thriving instead of just surviving? Take some time and really reflect on that. Quickly, we're going to talk about just some self-awareness, right? Some, we're going to identify some things, some symptoms, and then that way you can be better equipped with how we're going to move forward from here on out. And this is really truly a, a coping skill is to recognize the symptoms and to be able to identify the symptoms. So, um, so simply just for a second, think back to um, a time that you have been faced with adversity or faced with challenges or changes, think back and recognize how did you handle those negative emotions that could have been present from it? The stress, the overwhelm, the fear, et cetera, okay? And then we're gonna break it down because there are three different symptoms to any kind of emotion. It could be stress, it could be happiness, it could be love, it could be fear, anxiety, depression. So. We, of course, have our physical reactions, right? Our physical symptoms. So that could be that it's hard to breathe. Uh, our palms get sweaty. We feel phys physically fatigued. Our heart starts to pound. We can even feel physically ill, right? I can get sick to my stomach anytime that I get really nervous or upset or stressed. And then there's the emotional symptoms. That's going to be emotional fatigue, fear, anxiety, that nervousness, irritability, lack of concentration, panic attacks, and then there's the behavioral symptoms. These are going to be like avoiding certain people or certain things, not answering the phone call, lashing out, lashing out to those that you love that you normally wouldn't lash out about, self-medicating, right, turning to the smoking, alcohol, turning to comfort foods, <clears throat> excuse me, eating too much or eating too little, sleeping too much or sleeping too little. These are all those behavioral side effects. So then I ask you, are you merely surviving right now as I kind of listed off some of those symptoms that could be present? Are you living on autopilot? 
are you putting it off, whatever it is, right? Your physical health, your wellness, are you putting it off for when this is over? I hate to break it to you, but I don't know that there is going to be normal again. I don't know that it's going to be quote unquote over, that somebody's going to be able to flip the switch and everything's going to be no big deal, right? It's going to be back to normal, quote unquote. I hate to break it to you, but I don't know that that's the reality. So why waste the time waiting when we can get in the driver's seat and we can take charge and take control right now to stop surviving, right? To get into the driver's seat and head to thriving. That's what we want. That's what I want for you. So, of course, there's going to be a normal defense mechanism coming up. The, you've heard of the fight, flight, or freeze response. Of course, that's going to be there. It's going to be effective. It's going to be helpful. There's a reason we have those things, and that's a good thing. Okay, so I'm not asking you to never, ever feel sad or don't ever feel stressed. It's good to feel those things. It's, there's a purpose for that, right? But What's not normal when we need to intervene, what's not okay is if it is impacting your everyday life, if it's impacting your loved one's everyday life. So examples could be, are you having such a difficult time concentrating that you're not completing your day-to-day -day work? Is your job at risk because of the stress? Okay, all the changes. Or is your heart pounding and on the verge of a panic attack in the middle of a work meeting, in the middle of making dinner? Again, that's interrupting, impeding on your day-to-day -day wellness. Are you turning to alcohol each and every night in order to numb the feelings of fear or stress or anxiety? Are you snapping at your kids for things that you would normally not be bothered by? Are your family members walking on eggshells around you? That's when you know that it's impacting you and that it's not just okay. It's not just quote unquote normal to be experiencing those things. That's when we need to take action and intervene. And if you haven't gotten to that point yet, perfect, great, good for you. Let's continue that path and prevent it from coming up. Okay, so whether you recognize the warning signs of simply surviving life instead of living life to the fullest, thriving, or you're already past that breaking point, trying to push through the exhaustion and continuing as you have been will only cause further emotional and physical damage. So now is the time to act. Now is the time to pause and, like I said, get in the driver's seat and change direction. Okay, and so these are a quick, um, quick little example, the three R approach. So first of all, you have to recognize, again, this is the self-awareness. You have to watch for the warning signs of surviving, right, of living on autopilot, whatever that looks like for you. You have to watch for those warning signs and be willing to admit when they are affecting and impending in your day-to-day -day life. Then reverse, undo the damage by seeking support and managing these negative emotions reach out for help, implement regular and consistent self-care, okay? You're gonna have to take action in that step, the reverse step, and then resilience. So you're gonna build your resilience to stress or the negative emotion, whatever it is, by taking care of your physical and emotional health. So now what, right? We talked about that, so it's easier said than done, right? Let's talk about simple tools that can really help you with it. So we're gonna go over these ones together. Mastering the to-do list. This is one of my favorite things and one of my personal um, most effective things for me personally, so that's my own self-awareness. So when's the last time, <laughs> it could be an hour ago, that you were laying in bed or that you were driving and just your head and mind was racing with the million of thoughts running through your head, right? Does that happen more often than not? The constants, the constant I need to's, I should's, oh my goodness, I have to, right? I need to remember to switch the laundry. I need to run to the post office. Oh gosh, I forgot to get the eggs at the grocery store. Whoa, shoot, what's for dinner tomorrow? I need to get kids' lunches packed, whatever. It's a lot. Our minds have a lot going on. Memories, thoughts, and feelings, and of course the never-ending to-do list is what it can consume our mind. So in fact, studies have shown that 
um, us humans have anywhere from 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. But according to some research, as many as 98% of them are the same as we had the day before. Whoa, <laughs> is that sounding exhausting? And I just get the visual of the hamster and the hamster wheel just spinning and just burning all of this energy and not getting anywhere. So we need to get a handle on this, wouldn't you agree? So for me, I can get very over overwhelmed with that and never ending it, right? It seems like a seemingly never ending to-do list in my head and I can just go and go and go. And then I get overwhelmed and then I start to shut down and then I end up not doing any of the things. So I want to introduce you to the brain download technique. So this has been super helpful for me and I hope that it can be for you. So once a week, usually I do it on my Sunday evenings, I snuggle up on the couch, I grab maybe a glass of wine or a beer or something just super yummy. It's gonna be just this beautiful me time, okay? And I grab the nearest notebook, um, whether it's on my phone or just a tangible notebook, pen and paper, whatever it is. And then I just simply start downloading. I write down all of the things that are running through my head, what seems like a million, and I just throw them on that piece of paper. There's no spell check, there's no <laughs> right or wrong or in between. Nothing matters other than just releasing it from my brain onto that piece of paper, okay? And then from there, <laughs> which is funny because it feels like a million things in my head, but when I actually go to write it down, it's only like mm, maybe 32. <laughs> or if there's only 12, right? That's usually not that many once we actually start to identify it and write it down. So once that list is on the paper, paper, then you have to break it down further. There's the three subsystems that you wanna break, categories, excuse me, that you wanna break it down to. The do it, the dump it, and the delegate it lists. So the do it, that's gonna be the thing that you have to do. There's no exception, you cannot delegate it. Um, you have to do it, right? Like exercise. I would love to know if there is a way that we could potentially uh, delegate our exercise. That'd be cool, but I don't, there's no such thing. <laughs> so that's going to be on your do it list. You have to do it. It's up to you to, to get it done, right? And then there's going to be, I'm going to go to, to the delegate list next. These are the things that are important, but you physically do not have to be the ones to do it. Okay. So maybe that's going to be cleaning the house. Right, yes, we have to have the house clean. That's just part of being an adult, unfortunately, right? And it needs to be done, but it does not have to be you, unless that brings you joy. Some people really enjoy cleaning. I'm not that person, but if that's you, great, do it. Put it under the do it list. But if it's not you, then delegate it. If you can delegate it to the kids, to a partner, to your roommate, to whoever it is, because it just makes sense to compromise and divvy up the to-do list, great, have them help out. If that's not an option for whatever reason, consider bringing in a house cleaner, right? Because it's not just the 20 minutes or the two hours or however long it takes to clean your house. It's not simply that. It is every time you walk by that Oh, dirty toilet. You think to yourself, dang, I need to clean the house. Oh my gosh, when am I going to have to clean the house? And then it sends you on this negative spiral. So it's not just the time that it takes. It's the time of the in-between and the shoulds, right? We shouldn't should on ourselves all the time. <laughs> um, so then recognizing what you can delegate. Cooking, that's something that can be delegated, right? Um, laundry, data entry, Whatever that looks like, try to figure out how and who can delegate and then have that communication with them. And then there's the dump it list. These are things that just don't have to be done. These are the things that in this season of your life, they are not a priority. They're not adding value to you. They're not um, providing anything. They're not part of, you know, work, right? They just simply don't need to be done. So dump it, cross it off the list, release yourself from the pressure of having to feel like you have to do it, right? So maybe maybe you don't have to organize the spice cabinet alphabetically, right? Maybe that's okay. <laughs> so now that you've gotten rid of a handful in the dump list, you don't even have to think about that twice. The delegate list is already delegated. You don't have to think about that again. And then there's just the do it. So then your list of 32 things has now just decreased to 12. You have 12 things that you need to do. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you to the next step, which is the six most important things to do list. So let me um, 
give you a little history on this. It's really incredible. It's a fascinating story. So in the early 1900s, Charles Schwab, president of Bethlehem Steel, wanted to increase his own efficiency and the management team's efficiency. Ivy Lee, he was a well-known efficiency expert at the time, approached Mr. Schwab and made a proposition that he could not refuse. Lee said that he could increase his people's efficiency and his company sales if Schwab would allow him to spend 15 minutes with each of his executives. That's it, right? And so Schwab asked how much it would cost and Lee replied, nothing unless it works. He said, after three months, you can send me a check for whatever you feel it's worth to you. And so Schwab agreed. So they went that. And the following day, Lee met with the steel company employees, <clears throat> excuse me, spending only 10 minutes with each of them. And what he said was, I want you to promise me that for the next 90 days before leaving your office at the end of the day, you will make a list of the six most important things you have to do the next day and number them in order of importance. So they were all very shocked, right? These executives were like, that's it. That's all you want us to do. And he said, that's it. Just check them off. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. Check each item after finishing it and go on to the next one from the list. If something doesn't get done, that's okay. Put it on the following day's list. Each agreed and to follow his instructions. And three months later, after those 90 days that he asked for, Schwab studied the results and he was so pleased that he sent Lee, Ivy Lee, a check for $35,000. Now this was back in the early 1900s. So can you imagine <laughs> the excitement that, um, Mr. Lee, right, Ivy Lee uh, felt, right? And so if you were to use the inflation calcula calculator, that would be about $90,000 to today. Um, that's pretty incredible. So I'm going to challenge you guys to take the, take it, take the challenge, try it out, see what that can do for you. And I'm not saying that it's going to be the best way for everybody. That's okay, but you won't know until you try it. So give it a try. Write down the list and then prioritize it to the six most important and then do it in that order and see if it's worth $90,000 to you as well. <laughs> Okay, moving right along. So then there's the time management piece, right? So now you have this, these six things that you have to do that they are the most important things that you need to do. So you need to figure out when you can do them. So I'm going to be talking to this, um, not just work related, but all the things. So what are you spending your time on? That's my question to you. So we all know the importance of planning. You have your planner, you look ahead into the week and you start to plan out what you plan to do during each day, during each hour, however detailed you are. So I challenge you to take it to a different um, perspective and doing a time study instead. So a time study is actually logging what you did do instead of what you planned to do. So it would be at the end of every day, you look back on your day and you say, okay, I spent an hour from 11 to noon um, watching this webinar, <laughs> or I had a lunch meeting, I did this, I did that, et cetera. So you're going to figure out all the to do, all of what you did do. And that could include that you spent 45 minutes hitting snooze on your alarm, right? That you spent an hour and a half scrolling on social media. So you have to put that in, you have to be real with yourself and vulnerable and actually admit what you did do with your time. And then from there, you're going to recognize patterns. You're going to be able to see, okay, I could definitely wake up the first time my alarm went off and that would give me 45 minutes to work out, to pack a healthy lunch, to have to drink my cup of coffee in silence before the kids wake up. That's my favorite personally. Okay, then you can schedule in your self care, your physical health care, and your mental health care. That's big stuff. Um, part of that could be that you start to, and maybe maybe your schedule is so full that you just don't necessarily have the room, and you're not spending hours on social media or watching um, binge watching Netflix. That's okay, but maybe you can look at what is your morning time. Could you wake up 30 minutes earlier to get some of these self care things done, right? So you're just gonna um, start to recognize. Where can you fit in good quality things, whatever that is, right? If it's the work that you need to get done, or maybe you're working too much, and maybe it needs to be the self-care, the mental health care, your physical health care. Maybe that's what needs to be added into your time study. Okay, the next one. 
Oh, realistic expectations. This is a tough one because what we are faced with right now is hard because it's hard. Not because you are doing anything wrong, not because anyone else is doing anything wrong. It's just plain hard. So I ask you and give you permission to recognize what is hard and recognize when you need to say, I can't do it, or when you need to say no, or when you need to cancel something, right? Have a team meeting with your family, with your colleagues, with what, whoever you are struggling yet, right, in that situation, in that area. Have the team meeting and recognize and talk to them about their expectations, right? Maybe your kids usually, right, every other year have expectations of going to the pool, hanging out, having a lot of fun, um, you know, going to Water World, just doing all these fun summer vacation things. Now, if they still have those expectations right now, they're going to be, they're going to be, <laughs> they're going to be mad, right? <laughs> they're going to be upset. Their expectations are absolutely not re realistic. So it's important to start to have those conversations on the front end, right? Um, it's so silly, but I give the example all the time. My kiddos, I've always had really good sleeping kids. And, and I, I think it was very helpful that I always gave them realistic expectations. So it doesn't matter, you know, what age I'm telling my kids, okay, Briar, you have 10 more minutes till bedtime. Okay. You have seven more minutes until bedtime. Okay. You know, and I just give them that realistic expectation so that they know when I say, all right, it's time for bed. They already knew that whole time, right? Same for us adults. <laughs> this is a big one for us that if our expectations are to go on these fun um, event type you know, music festivals and things like that, and we're still expecting that, we're gonna be pretty devastated. So have the meeting, consider your realistic expectations, and then maybe you need to go back to that do it, dump it, and delegate it list just in this season, because this season is, it's a little more challenging than usual. Okay, so then with that also is to reevaluate those priorities. Um, I think, one of the things I am very passionate about is setting boundaries. It is really important to not overextend yourself, right? To learn how to say no to whatever it is that doesn't add value to you um, or to your finances or to your health or to your overall wellness, right? Yes, there's going to be times that we have to do things we don't want to do, but, but recognizing the things that are truly not necessary. Um, so setting those boundaries, right. And being able to verbalize those again, kind of going back to those realistic expectations of what you can offer and provide. Um, some other things, taking breaks from technology, that's going to be important. Uh, nourishing your creative side. I challenge that that would be part of your priorities because that is critical. Um, it's really powerful to have some way to, to release some of that frustration or whatever the negative emotion is by being able to get creative. It's, uh, studies have shown that that's very well correlated. Um, getting plenty of sleep, this is gonna be important. I can go on a whole tangent about this because there's something very power, powerful that happens during your REM cycle, the rapid eye movement. And if you're not getting enough sleep and not getting enough REM, then you can um, have more extensive emotional reactions because you didn't get to process, right, some of those emotions throughout the day. So I can talk to you more if you have more questions about sleep specific stuff, but, um, but just trying to make sure that you're getting a good night's sleep and um, doing the things that can really set you up for an effective sleep schedule, whether that's going to bed a little bit earlier so you can wake up earlier to be able to do the exercise or whatever it is. Okay, so here is the soapbox of <laughs> your self-care. You deserve the best because your loved ones deserve the best of you, not what's left of you. So I ask you, are your loved ones getting the best of you? Are your colleagues getting your, the best of you? Or are they simply getting the rest of you? That would be a perfect example of thriving versus surviving. And like I said, if we aren't taking care of ourselves on a consistent and regular basis, then we're not going to have enough to give, give to the people that we love the most, right? 
And so you can imagine the cup phrase, right? You can't pour from an empty cup. We've all heard that before. And I go into more detail about self-care um, in previous PowerPoint slides that I've done in presentations. So you are welcome to um, check those out as well. But, but basically making sure that you are giving yourself enough positive things, positive um, attributes, characteristics, quality time, etc., into your cup. So then that way when you're asked to pour out, which we all are, you can pour out the positivity, the love, the happiness, the joy, the things that you want to give to your loved ones, right? But you have to start first by filling yourself up with those um, as a priority. So really quickly, I'm going to go over the difference between self-care and self-indulgence because it's critical we recognize the difference between the two. So self-indulgence is characterized by doing or tending to do exactly what one wants, especially when this involves pleasure. So it's lacking control. This is going to be the quick fix, right? The instant pleasure. Then there's going to be self-care. This is the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness. Self-indulgence is going to be a little easier, right? It's the quick fix. It's the instant pleasure. It's, it's the, the comfort, right? Then there's the self-care. That's going to be a little more challenging. It's going to be a little more uncomfortable, but it's the thing that's going to add value to you over time. Going to mental health counseling, that's a perfect example, right? It can be uncomfortable, but it's adding value to you in that moment, and it's going to continue to for the long run. Um, scrolling mindlessly on social media for hours, it's that quick fix. It feels good in the moment, but it is draining you over time. You and I both know that. <laughs> okay, so making sure that you ask yourself, are, is this self-indulgence or is this self-care? I am okay. You can have self-indulgence. I'm not going to be the one to say never have that glass of wine, never eat that chocolate, never scroll on social media mindlessly. You can do that. Just make sure that your self-care is outweighing your self-indulgence. That's all I ask. Make sure that there's more self-care than indulgence. Deal? Okay. Um, so those are critical, very important. So then moving on, this is another piece of the puzzle that I think is critical to thriving. And that is going to be connection. And I think this is the piece that we've been missing because physically we haven't been able to, but also um, emotionally or, you know, distantly, we haven't been able to do this either. But being able to connect, this is going to be powerful. This is going to be an absolute coping skill that can support you in the, the mission of thriving. So talking to people, right? Reaching out, being vulnerable and being able to say like, hey, oh, how you, I need to talk to somebody. Are you free? Right. Um, I'm so grateful. I had a friend reach out the other day and said, I just need to talk to you. Do you have a few minutes? And absolutely. We went on a walk together. We chatted. It was, it was so, so good for the both of us. Right. Um, so I challenge you to do that too, whether you're the person that's listening or whether you're the person that's seeking out the support, either way is great. Okay. So being able to be more sociable with your coworkers, even some of you are working and haven't been, haven't missed a beat in person um, at the work site. And some of you have been working from home and all the way in between. Um, but be intentional, right? It's something that's so easy to do, but it's easy not to do as well. So be intentional about having conversations with coworkers, with friends, whoever it is. Um, limit the contact with negative people. So again, kind of like that self-awareness piece, take an inventory. Recognize when you leave the space of somebody or hanging out with somebody afterwards, ask yourself, am I feeling drained? Like, was that exhausting? Was that energizing? Do I, was it a negative trigger, right? Really connect with that and be able to limit. I know that we don't always have control over this, but if you do, limit that, limit the contact, or if you don't have control over it, then make sure that you're increasing the positive people, um, the people that really do add value and lift you up. Uh, giving back, right? Connecting with a cause or a sense of purpose is a really beautiful way to uh, feel like you're thriving. Um, finding new friends, this is something as a therapist, almost, almost everybody comes to me and says, it's just so hard to make friends. So 
that's real, right? It's so hard. It can be very challenging as an adult, um, but just know that it's challenging for a lot of us. And so if you reached out to somebody and said, hey, do you want to hang out? They're also looking for friends as well. And they're going to be grateful to hear that from you. Expanding that social network, okay? And then seeking your mental health support because you guys do have an EAP benefit. Uh, most of you do, I imagine. And then that is such a beautiful space to have undivided attention, unbiased opinion, and just the intentionality of being able to talk about how you're doing. That's a big deal and very effective. Okay, so we talked about this a little bit, trying to take that preventative approach to your mental health care. So overcoming the stigma, and we can do that through IOMI's program, through these kinds of conversations, is talking about them before they become a problem, talking about them before, um, talking about the depression before it sets in into destructive thoughts or behaviors, right? Um, so just talk about it ahead of time, recognize how you're doing before it becomes quote unquote too late. It's never, never, never too late. There's always going to be um, support there for you, but I'd rather you do the work and, and just overcome whatever circumstances that you're faced with. I'd rather you do that at the beginning and that way you can reap the benefits of being free from that for that much longer. So I have a challenge for you guys. This emotional stability toolkit is gonna be a great way to make sure that you are thriving in all of the change that we're facing with COVID. And so this is an, account, um, an accountability worksheet. So you're going to pick a support person. It could be your spouse, it could be a colleague, a best friend, a mom, it doesn't matter who it is. Pick somebody that you can lean on, that you can hold accountable and they can hold accountable um, for you as well. And then you're going to recognize quality self-care, right? Not the self-indulgence, but the quality self-care broken down into three categories, mind, body, and soul. In Naomi, we believe thoroughly that we have to have all three of those in order to really truly be um, living our best and living with that overall wellness as high as we'd like it to be. So you're gonna recognize the things that are good for your mind. Like maybe it's reading a book, maybe it is um, listening to a podcast that is about personal development, uh, maybe it's meditating, maybe it's increasing your prayer life. Okay, so you're going to jot down a few examples of what is good for your mind on that list right there. And then you're going to do the same thing for your body. This is physical exercise, eating more nutritiously, stretching. Um, let's see, what are some other body ones? Um, Try and blank, but those are good. You know, you know what I mean. So recognizing for me, it'd be like riding my horses or riding bikes. I don't ride bikes, but I know there's a lot of you that do. <laughs> so, so recognizing what is good for your body, what's helping to fuel and energize your body. Okay. Um, and then lastly, it's going to be recognizing the things that are good for your soul. What are those things that just make you feel good? So for me, it's listening to music. Music is really powerful. So I often will turn on the music to my favorite station or play a favorite song on the way home and just just sing obnoxiously and <laughs> enjoy the, the time. So that's a great example. Um, hanging out with friends is so good. Um, sitting around a fire pit. What I don't know what it is for you, but recognize what it is. The good for your soul, the fun, the quality, fun self-care. Okay. And then the challenge is to select one from each of those categories and to commit to doing it every day. Every day. Okay, so every morning you wake up and you meditate, and then you do a 30-minute um, yoga instruction, and then you listen to your favorite song on your way to work. Right there, bam, 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 all three are done before 8 a.m. <laughs> Pretty good, right? So whatever that may be. And then, of course, if there's ever a need for more support, um, and on this document, I always off offer those um, contact, you know, contact information if you're having any of those destructive thoughts or behaviors, or if you know anybody that is. So here's my contact information. You can reach me on my website or email, and then there is our business um, telephone number as well. And yeah, if you had any questions or if you wanted to be held accountable to your self-care journey and to your overall, to reaching your overall wellness, 
to be able to thrive instead of just survive. That is something that I only would be happy to talk to you about. And we can um, always schedule a free consult if you needed some support. And again, whether that's through utilizing IOMI, great, awesome. I would love to welcome you. Um, or I'm happy to advise you on who else could be a better fit for you if, if it's not us. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate um, your willingness to listen to this webinar and to learn about how you can thrive during these many changes that we're facing. If you have any questions, please reach out. If you'd like follow-up information, if you want the downloadable PDF, you can also email me and I can send that over to you to print and that way you have it for you and your accountability partner. But again, just remember, it's not just about how to survive. We can thrive and we can thrive in this moment and it's up to you to get in the driver's seat to make sure that you're headed in that direction. Okay, thank you guys.